guys, it's Nadine and welcome to Wacky Universe. Before we get into today's video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and that you hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any of our uploads. The question of what's out there in the universe may never be answered in our lifetime. In the meantime, let's look at some reasons that point yes to the question, do aliens exist? Signs of alien life. 16. Planets that sustain life People believe in aliens for many reasons, but what do scientists have to say about it? One of the reasons that experts think extraterrestrial life is possible is because there are already many planets we know of that could potentially sustain life. Who's to say those planets didn't have living things before or microscopic ones in the present? These planets are called potentially habitable exoplanets. Such places include Kepler's planets. They are smaller than Earth but are located in habitable zones in relation to the stars of their system. Then there's Mars. In 2015, scientists discovered that Mars has water. Even with its current barren state, human technology can make it so that people can one day live on the fourth planet from the sun. So if there's all these possibilities of life, there's no telling where life exists elsewhere. 15. Where are they? Many people are so convinced aliens exist that experts have even come up with reasons as to why they haven't contacted us yet. Stephen Hawking warned we shouldn't try to reach out to aliens because they might wipe us out. What about the other way around though? What if outer space beings have seen us already, got scared, and are now in hiding? A different theory states that aliens might be in hibernation because the temperature of the universe is too hot. Another theory suggests that perhaps aliens are still evolving and right now, they're mere germs on some planet far away. And lastly, other people think aliens might already be extinct. It goes to show that even the absence of aliens counts as proof that they exist. 14. Talking to aliens If we did find aliens, how would we even communicate with them? A physicist named Stephen Wolfram says that he has the answers. He is the CEO of a software company known as Wolfram Research. And yeah, we know what you're thinking. What does a computer guy know about aliens? Wolfram lets us know via a lengthy blog post he posted in 2018. In the post, this computer scientist says computers have a universal language and that the best way to talk to aliens is through programming. If aliens are technologically advanced, this might just work. 13. All the witnesses Throughout the mid-20th century, there have been countless people that came forward and claimed aliens abducted them. The first alien abduction story reported to authorities was in 1961. Nowadays, abductees have conventions and online outlets where they can share their experiences. Those who claim to have witnessed or encountered aliens are called experiencers or abductees. Many of their stories include spaceships and strange beings prodding them in an examination setting, usually with a focus on the reproductive system. Since there are so many people saying similar things, could this point to something real? 12. The Kenneth Arnold Incident The first abduction story may have been from the 1960s, but one of the most famous and most specific alien stories happened in 1947. Kenneth Arnold, a private pilot, was around Mount Rainier, Washington when he spotted a string of UFOs flying at speeds of 1,200 miles or 1,932 kilometers per hour, or so he claims. It was the first post-World War II sighting in the U.S. The amount of media coverage on this case was insane. Arnold not only spoke to countless major news outlets, but he also made a statement to the Army Air Force's intelligence about his encounter. Arnold was particular in his interviews about what he saw. Funny enough, it was around this time that the terms flying saucer and flying disc became popular. We have Arnold and the media to thank for that. Though there were many skeptics of Arnold, you can't deny the impact he had on how the public viewed extraterrestrial beings. 11. The Science of Light Most of us don't think much of rainbows. It's just an aesthetically pleasing moment of refracted light, right? It would also be a sign of life. Rainbows happen when light projects through a prism, like specks of mist catching the beams of the sun. What does any of that have to do with biology? Those bands of light come from chemicals and gases. The science of interpreting those colors and wavelengths is called spectroscopy. Spectroscopy determines what those colors mean and what elements are present in the atmosphere. A wavelength can tell us if a planet has more oxygen or pollution in the atmosphere. Both of those things can point to possible life existing. 10. Government and Aliens You might consider alien talk as something to do with your crazy uncle that doesn't own a smartphone and wears a tinfoil hat. Some of you may not realize how seriously governments take the possibility of alien life. We don't hear them talk about it much because they don't want citizens to worry. In 1952, the CIA Psychology Strategy Board warned that the American public could panic over something like UFOs. 
Many U.S. service members have made their own alien experience claims too. It makes sense that millions of dollars, if not more, has been poured into the research of this subject. Even former Senator Harry Reid said, we're not taking UFOs as seriously as we should. 9. Too Many Stars The universe is bigger than we can imagine. Some of those twinkling lights you see are distant planets and moons, but many are also distant suns. In the Milky Way alone, there are hundreds of billions of stars and at least one trillion planets. And that's just in one galaxy. With so many stars out there, there's a high chance that at least one of those planets, if not many more, have the perfect conditions for life to happen. Scientists think that at least 50% of the stars in the universe harbor planets. 8. The Phoenix Lights There are too many abductees and UFO sightings to count, so let's talk about another one of the famous events. Next up is the Phoenix Lights, also known as Lights Over Phoenix. On the 13th of March in 1997, thousands of people witnessed a triangular formation of lights in the sky. People within a radius of 300 miles or 480 kilometers claimed to see the lights, starting from the Nevada-Arizona line, through Phoenix, and as far as Tucson. Even the then governor of Arizona said he saw the lights too. Witnesses say they saw two groups of light. The US Air Force identified the second group of lights as flares dropped by Air Force aircraft. What was the first group? Not even the military can tell us that. 7. The Pentagon's Interest Are you not convinced the government cares about aliens yet? How would you feel if we told you the Pentagon spent five years investigating UFOs? In their reports, they described it as unexplained aerial phenomena. Let us remind you that the Pentagon is not strictly a group of official scientists. It is the U.S. Department of Defense, meaning that the possibility of extraterrestrial life could pose a threat to the safety of humanity. Evidence included video of aerial encounters, one was of an encounter with the U.S. Navy in 2015 on the East Coast, and another was of light pulses from a distant star. Could this point to an alien megastructure? The truth is out there somewhere. 6. More recipes available On Earth, living organisms contain large amounts of five major elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Along with those bulk elements, we also are made up of macro minerals such as potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, chlorine, and sodium. Researchers look for such features present on other planets, but some experts say this may not be the only recipe for life. Different elemental combinations may possibly create life, which changes the game in terms of what we're looking for in distant worlds. It's a theory, of course, but it has yet to be disproven entirely. 5. A Quick Evolution One billion years sounds like a long time. To humans that live roughly a century or less, it is. However, time is relative. Most scientists estimate that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Yet this does not mean that life started immediately. Life on Earth dates back to around 3.4 billion years ago. This evidence suggests that life can develop quickly even if there wasn't much around for a long time. So there very may well be planets out there with no life yet. We might have to give them a few billion years or so. 4. The SETI Institute There's a whole organization dedicated to finding life in outer space. The acronym SETI stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. The name refers to a collective term for all the research into alien existence, such as signs of transmissions from other planets. Famous astronomers Jill Tarter and Carl Sagan founded the SETI Institute, an organization with a mission to explore, understand, and explain the origin and nature of life in the universe and the evolution of intelligence. SETI works in conjunction with other groups such as the National Science Foundation and NASA. 3. The Kecksburg UFO Incident In 1965, a massive fireball was seen flying across the sky. People in at least six different U.S. states and Ontario, Canada witnessed the event. Hot metal debris fell over towns in Michigan and northern Ohio, causing grass fires. Those in the Pittsburgh metropolitan area heard sonic booms. Residents in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, who saw the crash-landed object, described it as acorn-shaped and the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. At the time, authorities claimed it was a medium-sized meteor, but those who said they saw the object said it had strange hieroglyphics around it. When the military examined the area, they reported there was absolutely nothing in the crash site, which has led some people to believe it was all a cover-up. 2. Who Believes? For all you non-believers out there, will you be moved if you knew that some of the smartest, wealthiest people in the world believe in aliens too? The likes of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos ride on the belief bus as well. Musk is currently using his billions of dollars on his company SpaceX to reduce the cost of space travel to colonize Mars. Bezos' rival company, Blue Origin, wants to launch reusable rockets so that tourists can vacation in space. 
Musk thinks we'll find life on Mars. Which of these men will find aliens first? We'll see. Before we reveal number one, we have a question for you. As we mentioned before, Stephen Hawking said not to contact aliens because they will likely be hostile and destroy us all. Do you agree with that theory? Why or why not? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 1. The biggest UFO ever? Astronomers keep count of the objects that have flown around in our solar system. The numbers round out to about 6,500 comets and 525,000 asteroids. Does Oumuamua fit in either of those categories? Scientists aren't sure. Oumuamua is the name given to a massive elongated celestial object that sped past the sun two years ago. The name means the first scout from a distant place and is in Hawaiian because the Pan Stars Telescope in Maui spotted Oumuamua. The weirdest thing about Oumuamua wasn't its size, but the fact that its orbit wasn't making any mathematical sense. Experts concluded that its trajectory came from somewhere outside our own solar system. When SETI pointed its instruments towards Oumuamua, they didn't detect any strange signals. However, some say it could have been an ancient alien relic or that aliens turned off their signals because they didn't wish to make contact. Oumuamua will be leaving the solar system shortly, so we may never actually know what it was. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification so that you don't miss an upload.